Well, hello there, humans, bees, earthlings, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to channel. I'm Bushka. It's just, I really want to want to start this video by saying you're the best. Uh, thank you so much for the support, the kind words, the financial support, the everything support. Uh, when the rubber met the road the other day and YouTube banned my channels and terminated my accounts, you guys yelled, screamed, stamped your feet and let the world know that you were unhappy about it. And that was so touching and so wonderful to be a part of. So thank you. If you want to see more on that and exactly what happened, uh, I did a big video on my PUBG mobile channel. I know a lot of you watch that as well. I don't want to belabor the point because I don't want to make two videos about the same topic on my channels. It kind of kills the vibe, man. Uh, today, we're going to crack on with a little bit of Blitz. Uh, and I'm trying a new thing with the head cam here, as you can probably see. Do not adjust your television. That giant potato that's got moving lips in the bottom corner of the screen, that's actually me and my uh, glorious head. It's been around for quite a few years now, and I've got quite used to it. It still scares small children at traffic lights, but for the best... It's best intentions here. I'm going to start putting my head in these videos. So... I want to talk about light tanks, I want to talk about mobility, I want to talk about some of the key features when you're driving light tanks, and I really want to uh, jam home some of the experience that um, has come to me from just years, literally years of running around like a clown in tanks like the T-54 Lightweight, which is going to be my muse for this video. Uh, this is my mistake here, right? I'm in a bad position because what I've done is something that you should never do as a light tank driver. I have assumed that the player that is next to me in the STA1 is an experienced and competent player. And despite the fact that I've been playing a lot of light tanks, and I do very, very well in this situation, outputting damage despite having so many guns on me and having two guys who are more than willing to trade hit points to come over here and get a shot at me, uh, at the end, it's my fault that I die here. And I, you can see I'm doing everything I can, every trick in the book. Side scraping, uh, using the rock, angling, dangling, wiggling, jiggling. It just doesn't help. And that is the first lesson I want you to take away as a light tank driver. You have to look out for number one because you are, generally speaking, in most light tanks, a very poorly armored version of a medium. And your greatest asset is your mobility and your camouflage. Those are the two things that keep you ticking. Um, You've got to be aware of where everyone on the map is. You can see there is a KV-4 here. I'm expecting to get fired upon from the area behind spawn. And I actually, this is another mistake. I get hit there by a challenger who's up in spawn. Now, it wasn't really a mistake because I, I knew there was a challenger there. So I wasn't too afraid of taking one shot from a challenger. But I did move along quite smartly anyway. Now... Watch the way I approach their spawn. Watch how close I hug the buildings and how I move down here through these trees, which are also giving me cover. Uh, and then I pull up underneath the gun line over here where I have hard cover on my left. That's called just game sense. And I'm going to give you some great examples of that. You, you have the ability to have on-the-move camouflage. Look at this. This is... I never thought these would come in handy for this, but this, this is why we're going to play tanks. Look, there's... There's a T-62A and there's a Comet. Thank you very much, Iverson. There you go. Iverson, the 3D printing god from Premo. Uh, I was lucky enough to play some games when I was in Los Angeles with Iverson. We're going to talk about CODing now. Basically, CODing is where one tank is driven uh, around another tank all over the place so it can get shots from behind and the other tank can't keep up with it and can't traverse and can't keep an eye on it. Jeez, that went well, didn't it? Um, Playtime's over. Boom. Um, <laughs> just hopeless. And that was what I was doing with the KV-4. I don't know where that was going. Look, I'll, I'll just, I'd just like to bail out on that bit now. Um, that was very... I just saw those there and I thought I'd use them. I don't think it works. Let, let's just move along. Uh, but what I'm going to show you here is two different instances. One of them is the SU-152 that is down there, or the ISU-152 rather. I am going to use my mobility to get behind him. I am using game sense to count two things here. One is I can see two tanks down to my right. I am looking at the speed that the cap circle is, uh, the cap numbers are going at, and I am certain there are at least two tanks in cap, at least two. Plus this is three, plus a guy down to my right is four, one dead is five, then another one pops in the middle at six. I'm pretty confident that there's probably three people in cap, so I'm safe enough 
to stay here and just finish off this 152. Now, that's all well and good. That's light tank 101. Using mobility to get behind tanks. Let's, let's see that again. There's the 152. It's actually a 62A. And there's my light tank at the back. The pointy bit's up here. My tank's all the way down here. As long as I keep away from that pointy bit. Oh! <laughs> Jeez, I just can't stay away from props. Comedy props. Where's, where's my banana? My rubber chicken. But watch the way I move through this section. I never, I never lose speed. I maintain speed. It's like a, a skier going through a downhill slalom course. I hit and I just manage to edge away there. And I don't wait for an invitation. I don't wait to COD. I don't wait for an opportunity for, uh, you know, a hit point trade. I get out of there. I move to another target. I'm a willow the wisp. I'm all across the field. That guy starts turning around towards me and I put my tank down below the gun line again. And then I'm back through and doing the same thing. Now, this maintaining speed is a super important part that particularly newer players don't get. And even older players, we get lazy and we start hit point trading. I am not stopping here the entire time. I'm running around at 60 kilometers plus and just staying away from all guns and it's like a moving feast i'm taking a little bit from the buffet up there a little bit from the dessert area i hit back to the salad bar uh, i move along and grab a couple of potato skins and i go back and i'm moving all over the place and getting a shot in here a shot in there and I'm, my game sense is such that i'm able to keep my eyes on the bad guys and have a good idea of where things are going now those those are the perfect moments when you're driving a light tanker. That's what you really want to be doing. However, uh, it's not always like that. Sometimes, obviously, you have to be in fixed positions. Now, fixed positions for a light tank can be deadly because you're not really a hit point trader. There is a rare few exceptions, like a T49, for instance, where fixed positions is great because you have such a large dose of alpha on your 150 millimeter XL rocket thing, whatever it is. Uh, but for a tank like the T-54 Lightweight that has a very average like 175 millimeter pen Russian 100 millimeter gun, this is not ideal. So what I want to be doing here is really focusing on the distances that I am from the enemy until I know where they are and looking for targets of opportunity. But you'll see how I'm moving hard cover to hard cover, right? So... There's a Yag Tiger down there. He's spotted. Great. Enemy spotted. I start rolling down. I don't drive straight at him. I go long first. I stop to see if there's any targets. I go all the way into the red line to actually maximize the distance that I'm away from this Yag Tiger. So that when I come screaming in from out of the blue, I'm doing it from an unspotted uh, situation. And that's the key because... Once you're spotted, people will react to you. And if you run into good players particularly, they've got excellent game sense, excellent battle sense, excellent whatever you want to call it, the force, Obi-Wan. You can see how uh, I'm also keeping an eye on the guys down the other end of the map, and I'm using this Yag Tiger and that hill to make sure that it is unlikely that they're going to get easy shots at me. Look how I'm not really just always going around behind the Yag. Um... Uh, and this is a mistake by me. One of the things that I mentioned earlier was that I've only got like a 175 millimeter pen gun, 180. Uh, and even with APCR, that pen does not amount to a whole hell of a lot. Sitting down here at this kind of range is okay if I've got side shots or they're weakly armored targets. But this is just foolishness. This is absolute stupidity. I'm wasting time that could be spent either getting into that Lerva, who is completely available on the flank in a 2v1 with the Batshat, or helping out the Yag Tiger over on the left. Excuse me. So again, we're going to start maintaining speed. We're ignoring that lever and we're looking to get down here into the IS-8. We're looking to do it in a fairly... I want to get there with a little bit of mustard on it. I want to get there moving quickly. So if he's looking at me, it's a hard shot. As it turns out, he's not looking at me. Now the lever is going to be coming in and you're going to see me just really focusing here less on the damage... Uh, I'm doing a lot of no-scoping, and I'm renowned for missing these shots, by the way. What I'm focusing on here, though, is really worried about where the gun is from the bad guys. Watch how I'll move through here and put that moisture between me and the Lerva. doesn't take much, just takes a little bit of 
little bit of situational awareness and and we're off and even in these tight tight confines i'm still managing to keep a fairly fluid mobility profile now that's clutch with light tanks you've got to be you've got to be fluid you've got to be not smashing into other vehicles now for the final part we're going to use um we're going to use this game for the final part of, of, of this video this is an all too common uh occurrence and this is something that i i really have to work on you're going to see there is a, a bavarian bulldog pull up the black bulldog uh and it's going to pull up out here and right for me if that's me over there i'm thinking right there's a 54 lightweight here i'm not going out here that's a foolish foolish thing to do if i go out i'm just going to go out sideways and i'm going to end up hit point trading i'm not going to get smashed one of the biggest things that i find i make the biggest mistakes i make right is assumptions and this is the assumption again this guy is a clown like he is literally wasted his entire hit point pool trading bad trades he's gone but it cost me damage that i didn't really need to take because i assumed that that guy was as good as i was at playing world of tanks blitz and that he was experienced like i was at playing world of tanks blitz and that he would respond in a careful and thoughtful manner when driving a light tank and he didn't what happened was i hit him he got angry that he got hit and then immediately just shoved his DPM down my throat. And while I did clear him, he took a lot off the top. So I've now got to play this tank in a far more conservative fashion. And what I'm going to do to make that happen is utilize the camo of the 54 lightweight. Now we're going to do more videos on this. And I'm going to do specific videos that focus in on the tight stuff. Circle of deathing and all that kind of thing. But in reality... It's a really holistic thing. Like that guy got me. I just flat out missed the Ag Panther 2. I was so focused on watching to see if the waffle tractor popped that I didn't realize the Ag Panther 2 had relocated. And uh, the scent and the waffle are actually not my problems at all. The Ag Panther 2 was the guy who pushed around. Now, so much of this is holistic. And by holistic, I mean it all goes together. Okay. So I am now showing a lot of game sense. That Yag Panther 2 woke up a little bit of a uh, an uppercut for myself. I was like, you're an idiot. I'm going to go out here. I want to trade damage for distance. So as this guy comes in, I come out completely unspotted and get the shot. Very simple. And then I'm just waiting to see which side he starts pushing in. And I'm going to ignore him as a target. Start hitting the Yag Panther 2 and keep the Yag Panther 2 where I can see him and keep this guy where he can't see me. He now has run out of time. He has to try and reverse around to get shots on me. I start reversing back. He puts his ass up in the air. We get the kill. And it's all over by the shouting. But I had to play that game very differently than maintaining speed and mobility because I made a mistake at the start. And so often with a light tank, you will overextend at the beginning, take damage that you can't really afford. The best players in the game, I find, manage to maintain their hit point pool a lot better and they might miss an opportunity to take a shot or two but what they don't miss is uh the awareness that there's a high risk involved in pushing out sideways to get an easy shot that guy could just as easily turn around and turn it into a big hit point trade like that happened to me and it and it becomes a, a almost a game defining characteristic we won that one pretty easily but it could have gone badly I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. I hope you're uh, enjoying the channel again. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on Z Battlefield. Oh, and if you want to subscribe to the Instagram feed, the Facebook, uh, the Twitch, all that kind of stuff, my PUBG mobile channel, all that, all the links are in the description below. Um, and the reason I'm mentioning that is I'm going to be diversifying what I do a lot. A lot of my live streams are now going to be featured on my Twitch channel, on uh, Facebook Live, if you can watch Facebook. Uh, I've got a, a channel there, and I do a lot of snippets on Instagram as well. So I hope you guys enjoy that. And uh, anyway, love you all. Thank you so much for your support. And until next time, stay safe on Z Battlefield. Bye for now.